So you're thinking about running, but not sure how to take the first step. My name's Brian Patterson, and I'm here to help. Welcome back to Brian's Ron Pod. And if you're here for week three, thank you very much for listening to week one and two. Are you thinking about designing your running program? Good for you. Running plans are super helpful. This is especially the case if you're serious about reaching your full running potential. But here is the bad news. The topic of a workout program design can be complicated, mind-numbing process. So it's not a surprise that scores of recreational runners have trouble when it comes to planning their own running program. That said, today I got you covered. There's no need to make this any more complicated than it has to be. After all, the workout routine design is no quantum physics or rocket science. In this podcast, I'm going to teach you how to create your plan by breaking down the essentials of a running program design. So by following the steps laid down below, you'll be able to plan effective and lasting running program plan. So are you excited? Let's get strapped in. Then here we go. The tenets of a good running program design with so many running programs out there separating between the endurance builders and the time waster is no easy feat. Just Google the words running training program and you'll get over 600,000 different results, each one promising to be the answer to your running prayers. It couldn't be further from the truth. The fact is, a good running program should be developed around your own running goals and preferences, period. So, for instance, a beginner runner who trains to lose weight will have a much different running approach than an elite athlete training for their next personal best. I know that does sound a little bit obvious, But as you can see, they are have very much very different needs. So here, what a personal running program should take into account. Number one, fitness level. Two, personality. Your own personal preferences. Training background and history. Schedule. Short-term running goals. Long-term running goals. And ultimate fitness objectives. So we've got one, two, three, four, five six, seven, eight different areas. So let's look at the five steps to help you design your own running program. Designing a well-balanced and an effective running program is a process that consists of five rudimentary steps. Step one, assess your fitness and health. The first step you should take into a des- take into account when designing a running program is the, your own consultation process. The right running program should conform to your fitness level needs and personal needs, not the other way around. Otherwise, you're heading into the wrong direction. For that reason, you have to assess your specific and particular strengths and weaknesses. You need to know what you are good at and what needs improving. So questions to ask. Since running program design is a DIY project for you, you're going to administer the consultation for yourself. So sit down, grab a pen and paper and answer the following questions as honestly as possible. Are you out of shape? Do you have chronic injuries? Do you have any lingering pains or or aches? Are you within the healthy weight range? Do you have high blood pressure? Are any are any, are you under any supervision of for any doctor concerning physical activity? These are some of the things that we did cover in our first episode. Let's judge those answers. If you've answered no to all of the above questions, then you've passed the first step with flying colours. So congratulations, let's move on. By doing so, you'll be assured that you can begin a vigorous training programme without worrying about getting hurt in the process. And that's a good thing if you ask me. 
That said, if you're not clear on the answers, then you may need to dig a little de- bit deeper into your current physical and health condition. And please refer to a doctor, as I said in the first podcast. Assess your time and schedule. To choose the most suitable running plan, first you have to assess your schedule, calendar and time. These questions can help. How many days a week do you want to exercise? How many hours per week are you willing to exercise? Which specific days of the week work best to support it? When can you start? Where will you run? Treadmill or trails or around the neighbourhood? Scheduling your running workouts. Pull out your daily calendar and based on your answers to the previous questions, assess the weeks and months ahead of you. Next, schedule your runs choosing that could be three to five days per week in which you'll train. Once you do that, mark it in your daily plan and schedule it like you would an appointment. Once you become more comfortable and you're well into the program and developing a routine, then try some cross-training on the days you're not running. This could be walking, going to the gym or even doing yoga. (laughs) Once you've chosen the days, pledge to yourself to train no matter what. Keep in mind that consistency is the most crucial pillar in creating and executing a successful running training program. So for instance, me, I think it works best that, although I did mention it in the, uh, I think our first episode, that if I have a goal in mind and a program of how to achieve that goal um, and a plan, then it kind of keeps me on track and it will at least give me much more of a better focus and direction. Setting the right goals. If you need to arrive to the post office, would you hop in a bus that's head for that's head for the beach? Of course not. Well, the same principle applies to starting a running program. Every plan is a vehicle that takes a specific route towards a well-defined running goal. That's why every good running program should have a well-defined goal in sight. When you set clear and well-defined goals, everything will fall into place and you'll no longer be second-guessing yourself every step of the way. After all, the specific elements of your running program depend on the ultimate training purpose. To clarify your goals, answer the following. What is the ultimate fitness goal? Why do you want to start running? Why do you want... What do you want from your running? What is your primary running goal? What is your secondary running and fitness goals? What are your short-term running and fitness goals? What are your long-term running and fitness goals? Make your goals smart. I don't know if you've heard this. It's about, as a rule of thumb, your goals must be specific, measurable, set within a time limit and challenging yet realistic. So, for instance, a SMART goal might be a personal target to run a particular distance within a specific time, complete a race or event, or anything else in between. Here are a few examples to consider. Run a sub 35k the end of next July, and maybe you're starting um, the previous July, or give you a a six-month run in to complete that goal. Run a minimum of 20 minutes per week for each of the following four weeks. In fact, it can be as simple as run three times a week or be able to run for a 45 minutes non-stop. Step four, choose the running workouts. Now that you have the fitness assessments and goals set, it is time to put it all together into a practical schedule. The next step in this process is designed design your actual running routine. This is the most extensive part of the training design and where things might start to get a little complicated, so bear with me. So what we want to do is look for the best guide to, to, to running. And then, um, so let's build your base. Building a solid foundation requires a variety of running workouts. In general, aim for three to four hours of total running per week. Now, I know if you're a beginner, three to four hours may not be achievable. So maybe just start off 
with maybe doing an hour a week. So it could be three 20 minute sessions or four 15 minute sessions. So this is very much dependent on your running goals and fitness level. And again, on the off days, you can choose to cross chain or rest. And obviously make sure that when you're doing um, each of your runs, then the following day is, let's say, a rest day. So you're able to recuperate that the resting is just as much part of the training as it is doing the training itself. So you're allowing your body and your muscles to to recover. And um, sometimes that's something that people don't really take into account when they're putting together a training schedule. Do a variety of workouts. For a well-designed and well-rounded running program, incorporate plenty of different types of runs of different distances or training paces. Variety will not only help you beat the monotony of running uh, the same five-mile loop over and over again or the same two-mile loop, but also help you reach your full running potential. Here's a long list of different running sessions that could work in your schedule. So easy runs, recovery runs, intervals, ladder runs, pyramid runs, progressive runs, tempo runs, uh, fartlek runs, hill reps, strides, long runs, negative splits. These, All these different types of runs we'll be covering in our podcast. Now, some of these, now it may not be in this podcast, but in future podcasts. Now, some of these we have covered in my previous podcast. However, as you can see, we can make your session as varied and as fun as possible. The cross training. Pick three days for cross training for active recovery or just maybe one day a week. We're doing something completely different. So it could be going to the gym and using the elliptical machine or going running, uh, going rowing, um, so or even cycling. Um, or even when, let's say, you're choosing days or a week where you're just going to have a week off, um, you can just go to the gym or just do walking for that week just so as you're keep moving and then maybe pick up your running the following week. The t- continuous pattern of training can help build a habit of daily exercise in your life with further improving your aerobic conditioning and muscular strength. Talking about the cross training, well, as I said, st- strength training is good cross training, swimming, yoga, rowing, as I've, as I've said, Pilates, and walking. So let's have a look at an example of a training plan. The beginner's running plan may be uh, Monday, you do an, an easy effort for maybe, maybe 10, 15 minutes, then have a rest, then maybe um, on a Wednesday, you do a 10 minute warm up, and then you do a 20 minute at a tempo pace. And when they mean a tempo pace, you mean at a pace which is a little bit faster. Then maybe on the Thursday, you go down to the gym or cross train. Then the Friday, you have a rest. And then I usually do a much longer run at the weekend. So it would be um, like a maybe half an hour to 45 minute, depending on where you are in terms of your running program. Now, I know this is just a template for a beginner's running plan. So don't feel that it's kind of, you have to do it. And as we said, it's something that you will have to decide on your own preferences and needs. So again, it's just to give you a little bit of an idea of a beginner's running program. Why do you commit it to paper? Commit your plan to paper. In my experience, written plans work better. In fact, a written plan may hold you accountable and help you stay on track for the long haul. Grab a training journal, jot down the days of the week along along the side and then decide on what to do each day. Run, cross train or rest. In your training journal, write down everything, running and exercise related and that can compare yourself against the previous benchmark. 
That's why, as previously stated, setting smart goals, smart goals is vital. Having trouble with a plan? If you're having problems pinning down your running program, then I have, I have a sit down with a certified running coach or even a personal trainer. So maybe at your local gym, maybe speak to your personal trainer and maybe they can give you a little bit of some pointers as to how to tailor the running program to your needs. So that should be able to clear out the fog and help you develop an actionable, realistic steps towards achieving the results that you're after. Dealing with training cycles. So to stay focused during training cycles, break down your plan into blocks of four to six weeks, with the last week of each cycle being a recovery week. So entering a recovery week, a recovery week may simply be, as I've said, 30 to 40% reduction in training intensity and volume from the week before to aid recovery and allow the body to prepare for more training load. During the recovery week, allow your body to adjust to that new training load. Please don't make um, the mistake of skipping these valuable training advice. In fact, many beginners start running with a frenzied zeal, running too much, too too intensely for too long, but their bodies aren't used to it. So the high impact demands of the sport. So it is really important to uh, take into account that recovery week as part of your plan. Choose a weekly workout template. You could, as I said, choose a a weekly workout template. You can get one offline if you feel that that is suited to your particular needs. I've got a couple here um, which I can put as part of the the, uh, show notes, uh, an intermediate running plan, an advanced running plan, and also a beginner's running plan. Don't get me wrong, these templates are not written in stone, but therefore feel free to come up with different templates if this one does not fit your schedule. In fact, you can always create your own, as long as you're keeping in mind the general guidelines. Just as a rule of thumb, surrounding quality workouts, think harder runs such as intervals, hill reps and long runs with easy pace workouts that are neither intense nor long. So um, maybe have them spaced out, the harder runs. Don't have too much of an intense or too many harder runs um, in during the week. So make sure you have them spaced out. So anyway, there we go. Um, we've talked about planning your workout. Um, and giving you a, a few guide, a few pointers as to how you can go about it. Um, as I said, it can be a minefield of information, but um, go out there, tinker about with it, and I'm sure you'll find a lot of advice online. With that said, now it's that tip of the week. Yes, it's that time of the podcast and it's the tip of the week. Again, it's an Apple Watch tip of the week, but just wanted to follow on from the last tip of the week. Uh, Once you've updated your Apple Watch or device, it is important to stay motivated with some music. Here are some key facts about running music. Science tells us that listening to music during exercise lowers the perception of effort during hard training which explains why you tend to push a little bit harder when a good song comes along. For example, some research from Brunel University revealed that listening to music during a run could improve your endurance by as much as 15%. Music can also be a useful tool to improving running cadence, and a well-crafted music playlist can be get you enough motivation 
to get you up and out of the door for a workout. I found that having a crafted noon playlist is a great motivator in getting you, getting myself, getting out the door. It can really give you a lift and transport you into a new world. They say that the sweet spot for running in terms of beats per minute is 120 to 140 beats per minute, although they can get playlists which are a lot higher up. You can get them from iTunes or Spotify, so make sure you come up with as many running playlists for your runs, the more the merrier, as the saying goes. You can put into shuffle mode, so every time you go out running, you can get a running pick. Once you're done with your workout, um, you can use slower tracks um, to go for either a, a cool down or a, war- a warm up. So, well, that's it for another episode. And looking forward to speaking to you next week with some beginner hints and tips about running. Just wanted to let you know that you can follow me on Twitter at Brian's Rompod. Also, my website is www.brianesrompod.co.uk where you can get show notes. Plus, all my episodes have chapter markers. If you need to get different segments as for the show, uh, the music is by Happy Day by Stock Audios. Again, thanks very much for listening and see you next week. 